So what happens after World War I and the Ottoman Empire falls is that Palestine is cut up. So is Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, all of these new nation states are created. And um, immediately the British start to map inside Palestine, mapping the land as private property. So here's a, here's a, sh a little bit, this is Bethlehem. And this is a map from the British uh, colonial administration mapping out the land, like the orchards and as private property. In, so we get Palestine cut up. Uh, we get the world cut up as these plantations, as these uh, domains of rule from the above. And then we get that internally also with mapping land through these cadastres, these private property maps which was so foreign to the ways of doing in Palestine. Um, there's a, I have an essay in Capitalism, Nature, Socialism called When the Carob Tree Was the Border, where I go into more detail about how quote unquote borders were understood between people on the land. And it's very fascinating to look at everyday life to see how people figure things out. So like when we're talking the question of how are we going to organize, we have a lot of wisdom from people on the ground from the below. And just to illustrate, and I'll pass it on over to Mohanid and um, to illustrate how this happens on the eve of 1948, is that before people would ask their neighbors, they would consult with their neighbors over where the border was going to be. It's that carob tree to that carob tree, for example. But then when the British colonized Palestine, they do away with those practices and they implement these cadastro map. Now, if you have a problem with this border, instead of talking to your neighbor, you go to the colonial administration and you ask them to be the intermediary to resolve these problems. So we see there in that shift, how practices of everyday for power is circulating between neighbors and they're the ones that are gonna have to face the consequences of whatever border is decided, right? So and they have to look at each other every day. They have to live next to each other. Shouldn't they be the ones that make these decisions? Well, that's the below. The above is this highly bureaucratic central administration that wants to be the intermediary. And so then what that does breaks that practice of building the common together with your neighbor. And it makes it so that people even forget that that's something that we're even capable of. And we go and speak to the above and we ask them to solve our problem. So looking at this question, how do we organize from here when the world is a lie, when they told us that international law is going to prevent a genocide from happening ever again? And we see that it's useless. How do we, how do we relate to international law? How do we use it tactically? How do we how do we create something outside of it so we're not stuck and just asking the above for how we should live our lives? <laughs>